end with news that some COVID restrictions are set to ease in Scotland from Monday, but face masks are to remain for some time. Dr Rupi has the latest. Big job for Dr Rupi today, that's for sure. Plus, with a heatwave forecast, it could mean an invasion of wasps. Vet Dr James Greenwood will be telling us why we should love them as much as bees. But if you don't want them buzzing around your garden get-togethers this weekend, he'll also reveal how your morning coffee can help. Ooh. And lovely Luba Mushtuck strengthens our core with a strictly fitness workout. I'm getting my core ready. OK, I'm glad to hear it. I am. Make sure you get yours ready. <laughs> I'm 15. Yeah. Just tensing it up as we speak. Thank you very much for that. Very good. <laughs> Uh, so we've been discussing this morning on the programme, Scotland is to move to level zero of its COVID restrictions from Monday. There's the small chance of one or two isolated showers breaking out over the next couple of days or so, but for the vast majority of us, it should stay in double figures. And then on Thursday, we've got high continue for the rest of the week. So there'll be some decent spells of sunshine, but also some cloud coming and going throughout the day. It should stay as those temperatures are set to rise further as we head through Friday and the weekend lovely stuff. Uh, I'm back in half an hour. Now though, it's back to Dan and Louise. Bye for now. Great morning. You are watching Breakfast with Dan and Louise. Uh, let's tell you what we want to say. Let's tell you. Uh, we'll get Gethin and Jackie to tell you what's coming up on uh, Morning Live because we don't really know. Uh, but you can tell us. Good morning. Morning, both. Good morning. Do you want to do it? You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could stop symptoms from getting worse. He shares his personal reason why this matters to him. Also coming up, almost half of us have downloaded the NHS COVID app, but with 350,000 alerts going off each week, more people than ever are being pinged. Strengthens our core with a strictly fitness workout. I'm getting my core ready. OK, I'm glad to hear it. I am. Make sure you get yours ready. I'm 15. Yeah. Just tensing it up as we speak. Thank you very much for that. Very good. <laughs> Uh, so we've been discussing this morning on the programme. Scotland is to move to level zero of its COVID restrictions. From been a good job. OK. <laughs> do you know that feeling? <laughs> yeah, I do know that feeling. Most days. 8.40. As long as you're not shouting, you're OK. <laughs> uh, Mike's here uh, with a look at lots of different, different things going on. It's a really exciting summer of sport, isn't it? COVID restrictions are set to ease in Scotland from Monday. It could mean an invasion of wasps. And lovely Luba Mushtaq strengthens our core with a strictly fitness workout. I'm getting my core ready. OK, I'm glad to hear it. I am. Make sure you get yours ready. I'm 15. Yeah. Just tensing it up as we speak. Thank you very much for that. Very good. <laughs> Thanks, Hope. Uh, so have we been discussing this morning on the programme, Scotland is to move to level zero of its COVID restrictions from Monday. Uh, unlike across the border in England, face masks will remain a necessity, while limits on the number of people out to gather indoors and outdoors will remain. Let's have a look at some of these measures with Professor Jason Lee. Look at that whole package in totality. And in Scotland, make those choices for five million people, whatever size your country happens to be, and try and make it as fair as we can. Now, we make a lot of people unhappy. Lots of event industry, hospitality, sporting events may be unhappy. Others thinking, no, no, we are moving forward. I, I'm not sure if this is the right way to think about it, but if I have everybody equally unhappy, maybe my advice has not been too terrible. <laughs> Uh, that's one of my that's one of my favourite phrases of the entire pandemic. Thank you very much for that, Professor Jason Leach. If you can keep everybody not too unhappy, then you're doing a good job. Okay. Do you know that feeling? <laughs> yeah, I do know that feeling. <laughs> Most days. Eight, eight forty. As long as you're not shouting, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike's here uh, with a look at lots of different different things going on. It's a really exciting summer of sport, isn't it? Absolutely. And talking of things returning to normal, how about this? A huge What's Sunday, it? though, it's going to be. With what the a week. What a week. Too much to watch, Mike. It's too much to watch. I need eight televisions. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Screens, iPads, whatever. <laughs> See you later on. Thank you. Um, let's catch up again with the weather. A mat is out and about.
Yeah, we are. So I mentioned that the economy this year, the Bank of England thinks, could grow by 7%. But it'll only get us back to where we were before the pandemic in 2019. We lost nearly 10% of output um, during the pandemic. So that means we won't feel back to normal probably for another year or so. And that's why the, uh, ma the main view is that inflation probably won't take. So if you think about growing very quickly, uh, you know, um, at say 7%, you expect price to go up but as things drop back again next year you do expect price uh, pressures to come down as well and I would say this is a global picture so we need to make sure that really um, everybody in the world can have access to vaccines because we're so influenced by what's happening elsewhere and what we've experienced today in terms of inflation it's even worse in the United States yeah. prices are up 5.4 percent in the United States so that just gives a sense of we're all sort of moving through this recovery getting this big bump up in recovery, but there's still some ways to go with the job market and with our standards of living before we get back to where we were before the, where we were before the pandemic hit. Uh, in the news today, Wales is vulnerable and those shielding and isolating staff. Jeanette Marara went to find out as many as five million people have had to self-isolate. And during the Euros, we saw the power of sport unite people, but we find out how in Doncaster it's fencing. It's body workout in today's Strictly Fitness with uh, Luba Mushtuk. We're getting ready and, for that. Oh, I, I, I am getting You're ready. ready. I'm You're ready. You're ready at eight o'clock for that. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to get in touch. She's throwing Akila in at the deep end, swapping fence for curry and it's all new for the locals who've come along. How do you stop the rice from sticking together? What you do is you cover it and you put it on really low heat. Okay, just help yourselves. Honestly, that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And after cooking for a packed house, it might just have started something. It's opened my eyes a lot today talking to these Muslim ladies. So it wasn't just about curry, it was about learning other cultures. As Akila has offered to cook for a community centre in Intake, a part of town where Muslim faces are rarely seen. I think issues within communities and stuff. But for the fencers, a suit of armour and a mask is a real leveller. Greenwood now wants to draw a sword on me for me asking that question to him. But anyway, before lockdown, presenter Scarlett Douglas went to Doncaster to find out how a local woman only fencing club was bringing a community together. And I uh, really feel happy with them. It's not just a sport. It seems that for once, people are being drawn together by the sword. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant idea. Luba, you're almost like dressed like they are. Yeah. Right? Fencing outfit in the blue. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she looks like she means business. Cue the music. <laughs> All right, Luba, three moves as always. Yes, what three moves as always. Well, today. today we are going to focus on our core, because it is very important. And we will try three, all three very simple exercises to keep our posture very straight and very nice. So we start with our first exercise. I would like you to stand on one leg. And you, my wonderful Jackie, you'll sit down and show the seated version. And I you do. will... Work told. with me and don't speak too much. So we go on one, <laughs> one leg, we raise our arms and then we pull in and pull back. Yeah, so we really work that core and stability in our balance for four times. Yeah, four times, then we do another leg, we do exactly the same thing on another leg. Yeah, beautiful, very good. Nice, okay. nice. One each side. And lovely okay. that you're yeah. not talking. The next one. <laughs> Second, we put our hands here yeah. and we go side crunch and back. Side crunch and back. Okay. Yeah, for four and times. Yep. And the third one, straight after here, we're gonna cross our knee to opposite elbow for four oh, times. Get to the elbow is the key <laughs> yeah, to that. And that's the one that burn down. here. Yeah, yeah? <laughs> well burned. Yes. It's about to burn. Good luck if you're doing that. Uh, take it away, Alan. With a midweek mid body workout, it's Luba Mushtuk.
going to get cross. part in a minute. Cross. Thank you, Jackie. Thank that you. is it for today. Uh, on tomorrow's show, Jeanette is bringing us another energising Strictly Fitness workout. And best-selling author and mental health expert Matt Haig reveals the trick to turning a bad day into a good one. Plus, it's the ultimate comfort food, but it's hard to get right. Anna Howard tells us how to achieve the perfect pastry. We shall see you tomorrow at 9.15. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.